All right, welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 and welcome back to our NeoFly series. This is, of course, episode 19. And as you can see, it's bright and early here today in South Africa. We're actually not at Kruger and Pumalanga, which is the hub uh, that we finished off at in the previous episode because we've taken a short drive. It's probably about half an hour, 40 minutes drive down the road to Malalan because we have a full day's uh, flying plan where we've got a whole bunch of different things that we need to sort out. The first thing is, if you look, it's quite cloudy out. We have one of our Kodiaks. If I try to not get run over here. One of our Kodiaks couldn't get into Skakuza last night because of the clouds. So there she is actually sitting on the ramp. And because of that, our pilot timed out. And so we're here nice and early to pick up the Kodiak, which has a load of fuel. And we're setting off super early because we need to get it up to Skakuza. They're using it for uh, some of their operations in the national parks with their little ultralight aircraft and things like that. So we need to get that up to Skakuza. It's a short flight to Skakuza, probably about 20 minutes. Uh, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Obviously doing that in this Kodiak. We're then flying the Kodiak back to Kruger and Pomalunga with a couple of passengers, leaving it there, picking up a PC-12 and going all the way down to Ulundi in KZN, where we need to rescue one of our caribous, which um, has some mechanical issues. So we're flying some parts down in the PC-12 and then we're gonna be flying the caribou to one of our bases in KZN. And then I think that brings us to the end of our day, we might actually have to bring the PC-12 all the way back up to Kruger as well, but we'll see how time goes. Sun's just starting to rise. Malalan is a beautiful little airfield. Um, so let's start getting things closed up. And just double check. Let's open sky for some so we can just double check our weight and balance. Plenty of fuel on board today. Right, so there we see we need to load up. We're quite heavy, actually. Why is that not picking up that we've changed the weight? Huh. Oh, there we go. It just took a while to update. So we're pretty much... Full, yeah. Neofly is just being a little bit slow to update for some reason. It's probably because I've got a whole bunch of AI pilots doing stuff. Right, there we go. So uh, we've now got enough payload on. We're plus 40, so that's okay. I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to get that exact. We do have fuel listed as fragile cargo, so we need to... Uh, Fly nice and gently, especially on our landing. Okay, let's get rid of that and we can start getting our Kodiak powered up. Okay, let's just accept that so that can start powering up. We're going to need nav lights and gun lights. OK, 
Okay, let's go. And we'll turn that on. And I'll fuel. Put those guys in. Alright, maybe we should get... Uh, some lights. Right, and then let's go ahead and do this guy to on, ignition to on, starter. And then mixture to low idle. and we can switch this off and that to standby. Let's get the generator and the alternator on and we can turn on our avionics and our box as well. Get uh, our cabin temperature to about 23. Okay, should I actually dial Scusa in here? It's just up here, actually. There it is there. Maybe we should just put in our flight plan quickly. He's bouncing around a lot. My throttle isn't up. No. Are we bouncing around so much? Have a look now. There's Kakuza. Alright, what's happening? Just the engine. Okay. Well, let's bring the prop up. Mixture can stay low idle for now. And then we'll do taxi lights. Otherwise, I think we're all good to go. Cool. Um, probably just hand fly today. What are we at? We've got up to three and a half thousand probably. Yeah, we might use the autopilot. So let's dial this in. Uh, we need to flip this over to GPS. We'll set our heading for now to roughly match the uh, runway in front of us. Can we see, definitely not up there, a windsock? Must be one for an airport like this. We don't have any wind information here, so let's taxi out a bit. See if we can spot the windsock. Give us an idea of which way we're going to take off. So my parking brake. Did I just turn it on? Yeah, interesting. I think I might have just double tapped the button because it definitely was on before we started up the engine and stuff. All right, where is the windsock? Otherwise, I think we'll just taxi that way. 
Oh, we can actually just take off from here, probably. Yeah, let's just take off in that direction. Okay, I just need to come down here. It's weird, the landing lights, if I use my Hotas, come on, sort of, and then switch off again. Okay, strobes are on, landing lights are on. Switch that on, mixture full. And I think we are good to go. It's a pretty short runway. Oh, there's the windsock, and it looks like we are correct. Pretty short runway, but uh, plenty capable of the Kodiak, so we shouldn't have any issues. And it's actually quite a bit of cloud out that way still. So we are VFR, so we'll just have to pay attention to that. pretty heavy today. Okay, airspeed's alive. There's 50 knots. There's 60. That's just because we're doing market goods that she thinks we're not being paid. So that's fine. Now we can climb it around just over a hundred knots. Beautiful area. As we cross over the river here, to our right, we're actually heading into the Kruger National Park. This side is farmland, and other side of the river is the park itself. Now, so the weather towards Kruger, uh, Kruger Airport, which is outside the park actually, uh, looks like we might struggle to get in there VFR actually. Out towards Kakuza we're looking okay. It's cloudy, but it looks like there's space for us to stay underneath the clouds. Yeah, let's get the autopilot on. Heading mode, we'll stay vertical speed. And once we get onto our GPS course, we can pop it into nav mode. All right, let's switch this off. I don't know why that was still on. pick up some speed as well now that we're in vertical speed mode and we're actually heading into the clouds here right. let's disengage the autopilot then we need to stay under the clouds So interestingly enough, we wouldn't really be able to do this because of the restricted area over Kruger. We wouldn't be able to fly this low. But we'll imagine because we are coming in with fuel 
they've given us permission to do so. And in fact, at this point, we might actually have to go IFR to get through this. I think we'll actually be fine to get into Skakuza. It's just we're going to have to fly pretty low along the way. Yeah, let's go back onto the autopilot. Uh, we can actually do nav mode now. Let's just hold our altitude. Two thousand three hundred. Around these clouds here to our right. That looks okay. But we've got to go into that to get into Kruger. So we might actually have to do IFR for that. Okay, otherwise speed's good. Power's good. RPM, we can actually bring up a little bit. Plenty of fuel. Beautiful morning. Let's see what we can find in terms of weather. Uh, for Kruger, out of curiosity, see if we might have to plan a, an RFR flight to get back there. So Kruger saying marginal VFR, this is 20 minutes old. Broken at a thousand five hundred feet. Ceiling fifteen hundred. I think we'll do high far for that. Not far from Skakuza now, just over five and a half minutes. So we'll touch down there. 
drop off our fuel and then we're going to do an IFR flight plan from Skakuza to Kruger and then we'll probably pick up uh, an IFR flight as well for the PC-12 down to Lundi. Still just under the clouds here. Yeah. I think what we'll do, normally, this would be a left-hand pattern, so we're going to land from that side. So normally we would go over this way and join the circuit like that, but that's going to make us fly early in the morning. It's quarter to seven local time. So we don't want to fly straight over the campsite nice and early so we'll do a right hand pattern we'll go here across the river and then come in like that rather I think because we're flying so low we're only a thousand radio uh, so we don't want to disturb all the guests in the rest camp It's a bit clearer here, but definitely back towards Kruger on the uh, or around the mountains there. That's where all the weather sits. Little patch of cloud, yeah. And that's the rest camp over there, and all of this here. Airport is just up here, or there actually.
Yeah, you can see the runway there. Disconnect the autopilot. Start getting our flaps in. Lights are set, flaps are set, keep it around 70 to 75 knots. A little bit windy, there's actually a tailwind I think, yeah three knots, so we've probably got about a two knot tailwind, which is fine, it makes our life easier if we land from this side, even if there's a little bit of a tailwind, it's not an issue. Watch the speed. There we are, arrived at Skuza. There you can see the sand parks, helicopter down there. So we'll see where we can stop here. I don't mind obviously taxiing onto the grass and stuff in the Kodiak, but this is where they operate from. Up, which we probably could have done sooner.
fact, we can probably just leave that on because we're going to be out of here in just a bit. Right, let's unlock this. Oh, just ignore the fact that we have passengers in the back instead of fuel. Okay, so it's going to bring our first flight of the day to an end. Let's offload our cargo and then um, have a look. I think we're just going to do IFR to Kruger. It's going to make things easier and then grab our passengers that we need for that. So I will be back in a bit. All right, so as you can see, it's a little bit later in the morning. The sun is now up. The clouds are appearing to close in. We've got our IFR set up, so I'm going to be using Beyond ATC. Uh, and we'll see how that goes. It might be a bit interesting because we're flying to two really small, in the grand scheme of things, small airports that are pretty close together. So we'll see how that goes. So we are Zulu Sierra, Delta, Romeo, Bravo today in our Kodiak. And um, we'll start off here at Skakuza. We have six passengers with us. So let's double check weight and balance because I think we're going to be a bit lighter than we were with uh, full up with cargo. And so, yeah, we've got six passengers going from here over to Kruger. Oh, we've got, we're plus 62. It's probably. And maybe we can make a small adjustment. Okay, there we go. So we're plus 46, 92% payload. That's fine. Let's close that and that. Our passengers are on board. I just want to see how I'm going to taxi out here. I think if I just spin around to the right, probably fine. We'll taxi back up there and then we'll... Uh, we actually don't need to backtrack. We can take off from here. But yeah, our clouds definitely out towards Kruger. Looks like we need to be IFR, so we're going to 8,000 feet today, which is quite high, but it's that's because the uh, the instrument arrival into Skaku, um, into Kruger has us at 8,000. So okay, let's get that on. Let's get these on. And our harnesses. Beacon and nav lights. Fuel pump, ignition. Starter. Generator, alternator, avionics, ox. It's on. Why is this all off? Cool. Now it's online. So, Skakuza Ground is 125250. So I just had to set it in beyond ATC and now it's picking up that we do have it tuned. I think it's because I fired it up while the radios were still off and it just was a bit confused. Here's the ground. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo type Podiac 100. Request IFR clearance to Kruger International. Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo. Studios up and ground. Expect runway 35. Climb 7,000 feet on runway center line. Then expect radar vector dust call. Squawk 5544. 
Expect runway 35, climb 7,000 feet on runway center line, then expect vectors dusk goes, walk 5544, Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, read back direct. Call me back when ready for start or taxi. We'll call you back when ready for start or taxi, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so I don't know about the accent that Beyond ATC has in South Africa, but in any case, um, what I do need to do is go and check my settings to make sure that flight sim and the AI pilot that you can use doesn't change my score code and stuff. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I think I should have fixed that. So, because if you see, I didn't set the score code earlier and it's got 7144 in there. So we are double five. Oh no, not triple five. Uh, double five. Hang on, come on. Five, five, four, four. Okay, that should be fine. I think we're cruising at 8,000, but she gave us up to 7,000, so we'll dial that in. And we're gonna fly runway heading, runway three, five, runway heading, and then she will give us vectors to Dusko. So we need to set this up. If I just invert this, then we can change this one. Oops. So it's F A K N. I think we're doing one way five. At least that's what's in the plan, but we'll see what ACC gives us. It's dust. Oh. Like so. Cool. That looks good. Why do I feel like that didn't work? Oh, it did work. Oh, the map just changed. Right. Then I think we're good to go. Uh, what we'll do is turn us around here. And then we'll ask for our taxi to 3-5. Once we get onto the runway, need to remember just to sync up our heading, because that'll be the easiest. So I have a feeling beyond ATC might be a bit confused about where we are. <laughs> Let's see. It's Kakuza ground. Delta Romeo Bravo is ready for taxi. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo. Scenery at this airport contains Thought unusual so. taxi path data. Runway like three five. Taxi at pilot's discretion. Taxi to runway 35 at pilot's discretion, Delta Romeo Bravo. I don't know if it actually picked up that. It made the 
nice sound. I don't know if it's actually detected that I read that back. Taxi to runway 35, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, I'm not confused now. So this is the issue now, is that it doesn't realize that we're at the runway. So I've tried to be on ATC a couple of times, and I've found that from the smaller airports like this can struggle. So let's go right to the actual runway and then see if it'll realize that we are actually there. Also, I do have the auto-tune radios on just because it makes life a lot easier. I guess in reality, we wouldn't have a co-pilot to do that for us, but it's really difficult to dial these things in the sim, especially when you're trying to fly. So I'm just gonna use the uh, the auto-tune feature. Right, I'm gonna dial, or put in flight level change and dial this up to 105 knots. That'll be our climb out. Headings on, headings on, flight level change. That's on, that's on, that's on. Cool. So let's see if we can get them to realize we're at the runway. Uh, Delta Romeo Bravo is ready at runway 35. Yeah, it doesn't get it. Clear Lucy, Air Delta Romeo Bravo. I didn't get that. So Lucy, Air Delta Romeo Bravo ready for departure at runway 35. Clear Lucy, Air Delta Romeo Bravo. I didn't get that. Yeah, okay. So, this is what normally happens with these smaller airports. Let's see if I go a little bit more. And then I wonder if maybe I should just change. I don't know. If Kusa has ground, they probably have a tower. Or if I just switch over to like Johannesburg Center. Delta Romeo Bravo, ready for departure. Okay, let's switch over to the tower frequency, which there isn't, so it's center. Johannesburg Center, Delta Romeo Bravo, ready for departure, runway 35. Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, I didn't get that. Okay, so I think we're just gonna take off in contact center once we're able. Okay, it's 50 knots. 60. And we are all flaps are up already. Bon voyage, air crew. We hope to see you again soon. Let's get the autopilot on. Check that that all looks fine, which it does. Right, we're on heading and we're climbing pretty slowly. Uh, 850 is actually not bad, we're he pretty heavy today. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo is climbing through 1,800 feet 
more 7,000 feet. Right, I don't think this is going to work. Let's try again. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo is climbing through 2,000 feet for flight level 070. Ah, cool, that actually worked. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo at Johannesburg West Reader identified as climb to 8,000 feet. Climb to 8,000 feet, Delta Romeo Bravo. Right, we're going up to 8,000. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, a turn left, heading 220. Left to 220, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so it seems like we are back on track with Beyond ATC, at least. And we're gonna be climbing into the clouds now. There's the runway we just took off from. We'll see what happens when we get closer to Kruger, if we can actually the ATC actually works for us to get into the airport okay because I can see what it's doing now it's put us on to intercept that so once we get somewhere around there it's gonna tell us direct to Dusko We just cruise along, climbing 850 feet a minute, passing just about to pass 4,000 feet. Might as well flip this over to GPS. And if we're going to do IFR on our next flight, Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to check. It hasn't changed our squawk. Okay, good. I'm going to do IF on the next flight. I'll see. I don't know if Beyond ATC or Simbrief is going to recognize, uh, recognize the um, Ulundi Airport. I think it's going to be too small. It obviously recognizes Kakuza and Kruger. It didn't recognize the taxiways as Kakuza, but that's okay. Right, it looks like we're gonna reach our 8,000 feet just as we get onto that GPS course, which is cool. Uh, the other thing I can do is actually switch this off. I think that was just for this. Direct Dusko, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so let's come down here, go into our flight plan, select that, direct, enter, activate that, and go into nav mode. Cool, that actually works quite nicely. Then I guess next, we would just let them know when we're ready to descend. But I'm not sure, because we don't have a star, I'm not 
sure what the what beyond the ATC is actually gonna do. Hopefully as we get closer, she should give us a runway and possibly um, an arrival because Kruger does have an ILS and it does have one star, but only for runway five. So if I go and check out on Simbrief, uh, in fact, I'm just gonna use Navigraph and import that Simbrief flight plan because obviously Beyond ATC at the moment only works with Simbrief. So I generated that in Simbrief. Right, it's Kakuza to Kruger. Okay, so let's see what Simbrief gave us. Um, our alternate airport is Joburg. Wow. So it did give us runway five, but no, no star. So we'll see what she tells us to do. Ha! Cool. Yankee runway zero five. Report ready for descent. So we've got vectors to the ILS Yank. Expect radar vectors for the ILS Yankee 05 and we'll report ready for descent. Delta Romeo Bravo. Oh, because I said I will report. Jeez, I heard that as me saying I'm ready for descent. Uh, that might mess things up a little bit. Hmm, okay. Descent to 7,000 feet, landing runway 05, QNH 1028, Delta Romeo Bravo. Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo QNH 1028 expect radar now it's vectors confused. ILS Yankee runway 05. Expect radar vectors ILS Yankee runway 05 and QNH 1028 Delta Romeo Bravo. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo QNH 1028 Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so I guess then we need to descend to 7,000 feet. Maintain our current heading. So she said present heading, descend to 7,000. And expect ILS Yank for 05, QNH 1028. Our QNH is currently 1026. So let's just go vertical speed and we'll just slowly descend. 7,000. Let's change our QNH, which is this here, 1028. Okay, ILS Yankee. And it's radar vectors, so that's cool. We don't have to follow any star. She's gonna vector us onto the ILS by the sounds of things. Okay, ILS Yankee is 109.1. So this we will need to uh, actually dial in. It's 109.1, swap that in. Oh, that's now two, genius. How do I, uh, right. Ah, we can have it on both. 109.1, but why? Right. Turn right, heading 235, Delta Romeo Bravo. Yeah, that's a tiny little turn. Uh, which one is active here? Isn't that the active side? No, that's the active side. Weird. Okay, that's done. Looks like we're going to head into the clouds. Thing. We made the right choice going IFR. And so far, beyond ATC is okay. 
Okay, 109.1 PKI is correct, and that's what we have up there, so that's good. We intercept at 5,800, so she should give us a descent to 5,800 at some point once we're safe around the terrain. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, the other thing I'll do... Oh, I think we're good. We can put in minimums, I guess. Um... So, we will be 3,025, so this is going to take a while to dial in. Can I click on this? Yes. Please don't give me an ATC vector now, because I need to hold this down for a long time. Okay, 3,020 will be the closest. Actually, but we always want to overdo it, so we'll do 3,030. Accept that, turn this off. Go away, cursor, Hey. Okay, yes, that's it, cool. Right, this we can flip over because we need a course of 54 degrees. basically directly behind us so the vectors she's giving us looking good so far and yeah I think it's a good thing we did IFR this might have been a bit of a pain to get through VFR right so we're expecting us to stay on this vector for quite a while because we need to go all the way to this side of the airport and then come back in basically There's the airport there, so we're probably going to go to about here somewhere and then she should vector us in. We do need to descend to 5,800 shortly, but we've got plenty of time to do that. Right, otherwise, torque is fine, RPM can come up a little bit. We can probably push in a little bit more power. Okay, we are QNH 1028. We're at 7,000 feet now. And ready for the ILS. Probably gonna say the same thing at Kruger, <laughs> that the scenery doesn't have the requirements for taxi instructions, and they'll just give us pilot's discretion. Which is cool, I quite, I think that's a good solution. Like if the scenery doesn't have the information it needs then it's up to the pilot rather than just say you know you can't fly to this airport at all or something I like the pilot's discretion thing it just becomes a bit of a problem when you try and get to the runway and ask for clearance but I think it might be because Kusa doesn't have a tower so if we were at an airport that had a tower controller we could just contact the tower and say we're ready for departure and that should work So we pretty much just stay on this vector until she tells us something else. Nice morning to fly. Nice and smooth. Cloudy, but uh, the air is nice and smooth. Afterwards, we go 
got a pretty long flight in the PC-12. It's probably an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes, maybe longer, down to rescue one of our caribous. While we're doing that flight, I'll need to actually decide where I'm going to fly the caribou to. So from Alundi, we've got a couple of options. We can go to Peter Maritzburg, that's one of our hubs. I don't even know if Alundi is going to show up on Navigra. Doesn't look like it. We could also fly it into Richards Bay. That'll work. Kithui will work. Just trying to think of what we've got in the area. Oh, Alundi does show up on Navigraph. So the closest is probably Richards Bay. Actually, maybe Kithui is even closer, but uh, Richards Bay will be the better airport to fly to. So we'll probably take our caribou down to Richards Bay. I mean, the caribou is pretty slow and it's got no autopilot, so that's going to be a bit of work flying it down there. And then once it's there, we can just get our hired pilot back onto flying cargo between Richards Bay and uh, um, King Shaka or Peter Maritzburg, whatever it was doing before. I need to actually check. Maybe I should do that now. Where its cargo is actually going. So it doesn't have a set cargo, it's just got a full load of computers, which we can sell anywhere. So once we... Uh, I'll do it while we're cruising along in the PC-12. Just figure out which airports in that area are buying computers at a good price, and that's where we'll take it. Hopefully Richards Bay or Tlutlui. We could fly to Virginia, it's quite a bit longer. And King Shaka as well. Peter Maritzburg is also quite far. But at least we have some options. Right, I'm expecting her to give me a descent to 5.8 shortly. how far out they're actually going to take us because the star goes way out over here past the town in fact it starts over there at Tilla so, I mean, geez this is all the way past Barberton Airport and there's uh, the sappy in the previous episode, we flew from here at Kruger to Nelspray down to Sapi um, in Islander. And you can see Tiller is actually on that almost the same distance away as Sapi is. So I hope it doesn't take us all the way out there to start an approach because that'll be a massive waste of time. But she isn't giving us a star. She said radar vectors for the ILS. So Hopefully shortly we start a descent and then we need a right hand turn. It 
So if I do this, that should go into roll mode. And I can predict that we're gonna get a turn to like 320, 325. Like about there, let's see. Thing, what it might actually do, and probably what it should do, uh, especially if we're in a bigger aircraft, is put us onto actually the start of the ILS, which is about there, which means we're gonna go pretty far out. Is it there? No, it's not quite that far, it's there. It's just past this airspace, so it's probably that one. So that might be what happens. A little bit less cloudy at this point. What I am really excited for is for Beyond ATC when they enable VFR. That's gonna, because then we can use it on all of these little flights in, um, in like the NeoFly series and stuff. Also hope that we'll be able to fly helicopters with Beyond ATC. That might be a little challenging, but uh, that'll also be fun. Okay, we now have the localizer and the glide slope alive, so. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, a turn left, heading 230. Turn left, heading 230, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, that's not what I was expecting. 230, it's just a five degree left hand turn. It's probably because we just weren't exactly aligned with the runway and it just wants to get us sorted. I still need a descent. But as you can see, we're about to pass, even at 7,000 feet, that glide slope. The approach on the charts does start at 7,200 feet at 14.8 nautical miles. That is, it's not one of these waypoints, is it? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, 234, that one. That is the initial approach fix. That's probably where she's taking us. Yeah, so there's that one. And the next one is just labeled D14.8, which doesn't show up here, but I think she's gonna take us along here and then to that, which we're going all the way to Barberton. <laughs> That's probably what's happening. But hey, this is why VFR is cool, because you can just do your own approach, really. Now we have to listen to ATC. And I mean, I think this would make sense if we were in like an A320. I would want to go out a bit further. Probably not necessary to go this far out in the Kodiak, but anyway. Turn right heading 310, Delta Romeo Bravo. Look at that, it's taking us straight to that initial approach fix. 
take a bath. Pretty cool. Little airport down there. It's one of the Barberton airports. I don't know what this one is called, but this one is the actual Barberton airport where they had like uh, bush air and stuff. Yeah, we're heading almost to that initial approach fix. So, because the initial approach fix starts at 7,200, she might just give us a vector onto the ILS and say, um, you know, just join the ILS. And then we won't need a descent to 5,800. So we'll see what she says. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, uh -huh. six miles from CI 05Y, turn right, heading 005 to maintain 5,800 feet. There we go. Established on the final approach course, cleared ILS Yankee Runway 05. Turn right, heading 005, maintain 5,800 until established on the final approach. Cleared for the ILS Yankee Runway 05, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so let's then on the approach and start our descent to 58. the power of it. And we're on the localizer. Now she said established on the final approach course. So to me that means the localizer, not the glide slope as well. So once we line up here we can respond report established I guess see I'm not sure do we only report established when we're on the glide slope because that's going to be quite a while still I think because she said final approach course we can call it in now Delta Romeo Bravo established on the final approach ILS Yank runway 05. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo Roger. Okay, so it's not going to clear us to land until we get closer, I guess. Just feeding in a little bit more power, keep us around 140 knots until we intercept the glide slope which is still quite a way out. And I still think VFR would have been a bit of a problem. So, but hey, I'm, I'm glad we're using Beyond ATC. Um, so far, it's been pretty good. Right, glide slope is now starting to come down. So I just need to keep an eye on our power once we intercept. five radio but the radio is not particularly useful here because of all the ridges okay one dot above Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo a contact Kruger Tower one one Lena decimal two Tower on one one nine decimal two Delta Romeo Bravo good day A tower on 11 decimal 2. 119 decimal 2, Delta Romeo Bravo. Negative a tower on <laughs> What am I supposed to say? 119 decimal 2 for Delta Romeo Bravo. Aha. 
Okay, so we've auto-tuned onto the tower frequency, which makes life a lot easier. Tower, good day, Delta Romeo Bravo on the ILS Yankee runway 05. Continue approach, Delta Romeo Bravo. Okay, so I've got the first notch of flaps in. We'll keep it around 120 knots, because we're still pretty far out. In fact, what is our DME? We are about... Wait, why can't I see it? Oh, six miles? So yeah, still got a bit of a way to go. Let's put this in. Azuli Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo, wind zero one zero at two, runway zero five clear to land. Runway 05, clear to land, Delta Romeo Bravo. Cool, so about five miles out. She gave us clearance to land. Again, for South Africa, the accents are all over the place, but anyway, it's not the end of the world. Could be a lot worse. Okay, let's get another stage of flaps in. Let's go props full. to land so we can get all of these on and that too. Okay, go around takes us to six and a half. So we'll dial that in. Little bit hazy, but nothing serious. I'm just thinking, if the weather's like this up here, the chance of it being cloudy and misty and stuff down on the coast is pretty high. Why is that your damn ball? It's weird. Cool to test out beyond ATC with a go around, but I'm not going to do that now because we've got too many things to do today. What is the time? So UTC, it's just about six or so almost eight o'clock local. So I've got plenty of time to head all the way down to Lundi and rescue our caribou. It's interesting looking caribou. It's blue and red. So. Uh, You'll obviously see that a bit later in the episode. Right, let's disconnect the autopilot. Like we've got a nice tailwind. I probably should have aimed before the touchdown markers so we don't have to backtrack, but I didn't do that. So 
So it's gonna be interesting to see what she tells us now because we have to backtrack. There's only one taxiway here. Zulu Sierra, Delta Romeo Bravo. Exit right, next available taxiway. You greased that landing. Ace. Exit right, next available taxiway. Delta Romeo Bravo. Now, there are no taxiways to the right, so I'm assuming she means we turn around and exit to the right, because that is the correct side, like this. There's no taxiways further down that go to the right, so it can only be this one here. Okay, flaps. Let's get our mixture down to low. Right, and welcome back to Kruger, where we didn't start this morning. We started off at Malalan. One two two decimal six five for Delta Romeo Bravo. Ground Delta Romeo Bravo request taxi. It's probably going to say pilot's discretion. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo hmm. did not copy. That's interesting. So maybe ground Delta Romeo Bravo vacated runway zero five on Alpha ready for taxi. That doesn't go. Zulu Sierra no. Delta Romeo Bravo did not copy. Ground Delta Romeo Bravo on Alpha request taxi to the gate. It doesn't know. Zulu Sierra Delta Romeo Bravo. Request not understood. Even the options it's giving me, I'm looking at the uh, software now. The, the options that you can click on and have the AI voice, it only has wind check and radio check. So we're just going to taxi in. I'm not going to take one of the gates. I'm just going to go into this parking over here. Now oh, that's probably fine. Okay, parking brake. and begin the disembarkation. Thank you. Right, our passengers are disembarking.
Okay, there we are, safely at Kruger. Disembarking finished. Have a nice day. So next, we're gonna head over to pick up our PC-12. Ready for engine start. And then take that down to Alundi. So I will see you a little bit later in the day. It's currently about eight o'clock in the morning. So I will see you just a bit later in the morning once we have our PC-12 ready to go. And we're gonna do an IFR flight plan. Hopefully, Simbri. Well, actually, Ulundi is here on Navigraph, so I'm assuming Simbri uh, and Beyond ATC should be okay with it. But I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, so here we are in our PC-12. We, as you can maybe see, she's leaning back quite a bit. Uh, we're loaded up with the parts we need to rescue our caribou. Um, it's about 11 o'clock now. The weather's cleared quite a bit. If we look around, there's still a little bit of cloud in the area, but uh, quite a bit less than when we arrived in the Kodiak. And uh, we have an IFR flight plan ready to go down to Lundi. So, ATC call sign today is we are Zulu Sierra Papa Pali Alpha. So let's jump aboard and start getting things red. We'll just uh, pretend that the chatter in the cabin, maybe we're taking a Mickey with us. Although we aren't though, so maybe I should just get rid of that. Because if we look in the back, it's just kit that we need. So let me actually just go here and just turn off the cabin ambient since we're doing cargo this round. Right. Another um, Simworx Studios aircraft, obviously the Kodiak that we flew earlier this morning, is also made by Simworx. Let's go ahead and get some power to the aircraft so we can do batteries. And I think we'd have to do avionics 1 and 2 to use our radios. Okay, and have lights, beacon lights. That's fine for now. And get that on. No smoking and seatbelt, even though we don't have passengers. Right, so this can go to standby because we'll need that when ATC assigns us our squawk. And then we'll wait for this to power up because that's going to do our radios. Okay, let's synchronize these. Make sure that that's right. Cool, that's set. Say okay on that one and that one. Right, then Kruger's ground is 122650. 122650. Ground, good day. Zulu Sierra, Papa Charlie Alpha requesting IFR clearance. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha, Kruger Apron Ground, expect runway 23. Climb 9000 feet on runway center line, then expect radar vectors nexus. Squawk 1330. Expect runway 23, climb 9000 feet on runway heading, then expect vectors nexus, squawk 1330, Papa Charlie Alpha. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha, read back correct. Call me back when ready for start or taxi. We'll call you back, Papa Charlie Alpha. I don't know if that's going to work. Ah, oh, it did work. Cool. Okay, so we've got 1330. We're climbing to 9000 feet. So we can dial that in. And we'll just do a vertical speed of 1500. And we can engage that. That's on. And we'll see if that actually works. I might have to engage it again, which is not a big deal. Right. It'll be runway 23 and runway heading. Uh, so let's do this. Oh, runway 23 is 
the direction we're facing. So it's not runway five like we landed on. Interesting. Okay, cool. That's set. My plan. Our PKV is right here. So we're going to stay runway heading and then we'll get a direct to that. Okay, let's finish our setup so we can go and do the test for this. Reset. Cool, fuel quantity is set. Then, fine for now, I think we're ready to start. Oh, we can do this and we can do that. Uh, that's on GPS. This we need to switch over. Yes. That's cool, that's cool. Okay, fire test. Double check down here. It's there. Right, and then push the test we'll do once the engine is on. Ground, Papa Charlie Alpha, request startup. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha, engine start approved, call when ready for taxi. Startup approved, Papa Charlie Alpha. Okay, so let's go. That's all fine, that's all fine. Cool. So we can do starter and then come down here. And we can bring our condition up to ground idle. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Okay, temperature RPM torque is pretty low, but I guess it's because our throttle's all the way back. Let's do generator one, generator two, and just turn on the probes. We'll turn on our taxi lights. Let's do our pusher test. So we engage that. We make sure the flaps are set to 15, I think it is. Is it 15? Yes. Okay, then we can get this guy back and push up our throttle slowly until it starts the test it should have done by now. Maybe it's because I had the flaps down when I engaged this. There we go. Wait for that to push in. Override. Wait for the light. Cool. Disengage. Back up top. Disengage. And then we can get rid of that. Right, let's arm this guy. Let's get this guy onto auto. Those are done, those are done, those are done, and trims are in the green. Pass is clear. Squawk set on standby. GPS is set, altitude is set. I don't know if this is actually on. Oh, now it's on. Let's see if this will work. So I've got it to work before, where I can have this set up on the ground, and as soon as we engage, it goes to the correct vertical spot. Okay, flight director's on, that's done, that's done. Cool, I think we're ready for taxi. Ground Papa Charlie Alpha is ready to taxi. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha, scenery at this airport contains unusable taxi path data. Runway 2 train taxi at pilot discretion. To the runway 23, Papa Charlie Alpha. Okay, so as expected, we will do pilot's discretion taxi to runway 2. And we are nice and heavy today. Okay, flaps are set for takeoff. We'll do lights once we get to the runway. So 
So we're gonna go across the apron here, onto the taxiway, left on the runway, we'll taxi, or well, we'll backtrack down, and then take off runway two, three. Okay, then we're climbing, runway heading to 9,000 feet and expecting vectors to our first waypoint, which is Nexus. to do such a long taxi and the wind is super chilled. Okay, before we enter the runway, recognition strobe landing. That's fine, that's fine. We don't need de-icing, cool. Okay, we're entering the runway. Turn on this transponder. Plenty of fuel on board. All our instruments, all our engine instruments are in the green. QNH 1028 set. Oh, we just need to backtrack down. So I think. I was thinking about this now. When it says the scenery contains unusable taxi park data, I think that means that Beyond ATC doesn't know when we're at the runway. So I reckon, see now, does Kruger have a tower? Let's check. It does, 119 decimal two. I think what I should just do is flip over to tower, which I can do now. And then when we're ready, request departure. See, Skakuza didn't have a tower um, controller. So we never actually got that cleared for takeoff instruction. We just had to report to center that um, we were now in their airspace. I guess the wind is favoring 2-3. Still pretty light. I'm just going to use this this taxiway here. It goes down to some hangars here, which I think are Air Force hangars. Might be wrong, but they look like Air Force hangars down there. Let's go condition lever high. Right, we'll line it up and then let tower know. On the tower frequency now, 119.2, yes. Let them know we are ready for departure. Other thing I want to do quickly is just sync up that heading, like so. Tower Papa Charlie Alpha, ready for departure. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha, Kruger Tower, wind 240 at 1, fly heading 230, runway 23, cleared for takeoff. 
Dubai heading 230, runway 23, cleared for takeoff, Papa Charlie Alpha. Okay, so it's not quite runway heading, but we're gonna fly 230 after takeoff. Okay, here we go. Talk's coming up, RPM's coming up, ITT is coming up. 50 knots. Flaps coming up, picking up speed nicely. Yeah, let's get the autopilot on. Gonna put us on two three zero. Zulu Sierra Papa Charlie Alpha. Contact Johannesburg West Radar one one eight decimal five. One one eight decimal five for Papa Charlie Alpha. Good day. Okay, climbing at 1500, we are on the correct heading, add a bit more power in here, flaps up, gear up, let's do recognition lights, taxi lights and landing lights off, initial separator closed, and now we can contact radar. Radar, good day. Papa Charlie Alpha climbing through 4,500 feet or 9,000 feet. Heading 175, Papa Charlie Alpha. Right, there we are, powering out of Kruger. So speed's picking up nicely. We're climbing 1,500 feet per minute, just about to pass 6,000 feet. What is our transition altitude here, actually? I think it's 8,000? No, I think it's 10,000. Um, it is... Oh, it's 9,000. Okay. It's fine, we're climbing to a flight level so we can actually go standard anyway. Yeah, so then she should give us a direct to Nexus at some point. I'm just gonna load up my flight plan here on Navigraph. I'm just using the Navigraph app on my phone just because it's a bit easier. Direct to Nexus, Papa Charlie Alpha. Right, let's go direct to Nexus. And then we can go nav. Perfect. Just passing 8,000 feet. Uh, I'll climb, I'll climb. Our cruise altitude today is 240. 
they should still give us a couple more climb instructions. Doubt we'll go straight to 240. We'll probably go like 18, 19,000 feet and then 24,000 or flight level 240. Okay, we're now direct to Nexus. Straight up. Flight level 240. Flight level 240, Papa Charlie Alpha. Okay, 240. Alright, altitude is on, vertical speed, we're still doing 1500. That's cool. The one thing I didn't do, which is going to become an issue very shortly, is the cabin altitude. I always forget to do this. So that would be 2-4, so we can do it about there. Let's just increase this a bit because I forgot. I'm expecting to see some more clouds, which so far looks about right, but I'm expecting to see more clouds out towards the coast where we're heading. So obviously Alundi is not right on the coast, but it's pretty close. Now if it's very cloudy down there, we're going to have an issue because the caribou... I don't even know if you can do IFR on the caribou. You probably can, but it's very old school. I don't know if I'm confident enough to do IFR. I wouldn't do it with Beyond ATC because there's no autopilot and stuff like that. So in reality, I think, well, obviously you could hand fly IFR in reality, but we need a co-pilot to help with, because there's no way I can set radio frequencies and stuff like that while I'm hand flying. Which obviously in reality you can do. Anyway, we're about 2 minutes and 40 seconds from Nexus, and we're just passing through 12,500 feet, speed's looking good, everything's in the green, plenty of fuel, our endurance hasn't populated, which means that this didn't actually work when I set this up earlier, that's awkward, see how fuel quantity says zero. I hope that fuel quantity is right then. That's weird, so that takes that away and puts it down here. You would want that. Right, coming up to fourteen and a half thousand. Actually, at this point, we are leaving South African airspace, almost. We're about to cross into Eswatini, I believe. Which we will overfly and then enter back into South African airspace just before Jerax, which is that waypoint there. 
So Dolpu is, oh no, Nexus is actually on the border here. And then this waypoint, Nexesu, is right over um, Matsapa International. And then the next one, which is Jerax, is just pretty much right on the border as we head back into South African airspace again. Near the town of Hongola, if you know where that is. Now, Alundi has no charts and I'm guessing no weather information, no. So I wonder what's the closest. Richards Bay is probably the closest airport. But I mean, the difference in weather between Richards Bay and Lundy could be massive. Oh great, Richards Bay doesn't have weather reporting either. So then probably the only way that I can get is for Durban. Durban says nice VFR, six knot winds, cab okay, 23 degrees, plenty of visibility. So Durban's looking good, but where we're going is further up along the coast, which might still be in this belt of cloud that we're actually flying next to now. So we'll have to see when we get there. Uh, it's about an hour and a half flight. So I think what we do is probably do a bit of a time lapse once we get up to our cruise alt. In fact, maybe I won't do a time lapse. I might just cut it out just so this video doesn't get super long. I think what I'm going to do for this video is we will um, rescue the caribou and then I think we'll end it after that flight we won't fly the PC-12 all the way back to Kruger in the same episode having said that there is something cool coming for the next episode so for episode 20 um, I've got something cool planned which will be different for the channel and different for Neofly as well So it seems like our pressurization is actually fine. Cool. Okay, 21,000. I wonder if it'll cause problems if I reset this now. So it's reset our fuel used, but at least we now have these figures, which I'd rather have than this being super accurate. So we've got four and a half hours endurance, 1900 pounds on board. Right, we're into Eswatini airspace now. Nine minutes from Exersu. So probably only going to spend like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, maybe a bit more than that. 20 minutes over, or 20 minutes outside of uh, South African airspace. No clouds out on that side, crazy. 
23,000. It's a thousand ago. There we are at flight level 240. Now we will pick up some speed. So let's just keep an eye on our tour. And you watch that time in route just drop as we accelerate. But everything's looking good. ICT is actually, ah, yeah, it's pretty stable. Everything's still in the green. Plenty of endurance. Right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll cut the video there and join you again when it's time to prep for our descent into Lundi, which is gonna be interesting because no charts, tiny little airports, no ILS or anything, so I'm interested to see what Beyond ATC is going to do with us for that one. So, I'll see you in just a bit. Right, so we're just passing through 10,500. We've been given our instruction to descend to 5,800. And they've told us to expect vectors for the visual approach runway 05. We're about 17 miles out. We're still following our GPS course. We'll see, at some point, there must give us a heading to fly. And then I guess we'll just switch over to visual once we can see the airport. There is quite a bit of terrain in this area. Um, I've never actually landed at this airport as far as I can remember. Quite a bit of terrain, so we'll see how ATC copes with that. Uh, about three minutes out from the airport so fairly soon we need to start vectoring runway five is we're gonna be landing opposite to where we're facing now I think what I'm going to do at this point then is switch over to heading mode. We'll just maintain this heading rather than turning towards the airport, which is down there somewhere. And we'll just see, because we still haven't got any heading instructions since we started the descent. Also, Beyond ATC didn't give us a Q&H, he just said Q&H, but there was no number after it, so... It's just a bit weird. We're pretty close to the airport and we still haven't been given, a uh, given any headings. So I'm just going to stay. What are we? 207? 208? And then I guess we'll make a series of left turns towards the airport, which appears to be just kind of in this valley here between these two ridges. I think it's down there somewhere. Flight 
Flight press and heading and descend to 3,900. It's Papa Charlie Alpha. Okay, so we're still on present heading. but now that we're going to an altitude, I need a Q and H. Maybe I'll just cheat. In reality, you could obviously ask the controller. It doesn't seem to be an option to do that in Beyond ATC at the moment. Okay, altitude is armed, so we should level up nicely at 3.9. Still got a bit of a way to go. 3.9 seems quite low. I mean, look at that terrain. Bumpy here over the mountains. Yeah, we're at 3.9, we're above the terrain. So that's all good still. Just trying to spot the runway. I'm going to start slowing down quite a bit now because we've leveled off and I'm back the power off quite a bit. Left heading 165, descent to 2800. It's Papa Charlie Alpha. Yeah, 2800 seems risky. We're going to have to turn before this mountain. to get a left turn soon, like about now. Alpha to left, heading zero eight zero. Turn left, heading 080, Papa Charlie Alpha. That's pretty close. I think I see the runway. Does it have more than one runway then? Field in sight, Papa Charlie Alpha. Field inside, Papa Charlie Alpha. Zulu Sierra, Papa Charlie Alpha. Clear visual approach runway 05. Clear visual approach runway 05, Papa Charlie Alpha. Approved, Papa Charlie Alpha. Wonder if it, if it was our speed that caught him out because, jeez, didn't line us up with the runway at all. We overshot 
a lot. This is runway 5, so we are correct. But yeah, I wasn't expecting to have to turn back, but maybe we were just a bit fast. Anyway, we are on final now. Whoa, that was interesting. Are up. And lights are set. I didn't show the lights, so I just did it on my hotels. Because I need to figure out where I'm going to taxi here. Oh, I think. Oh, right. These are like the little stands to the left. Yeah, I'm having to brake really hard to get it to. Turn. Let's also just do this. I mean, that didn't just shut it down, did it? No, it didn't. Okay. Right, so I guess we just kind of do something like this. I don't have enough power. Airport. Got a big apron here. Something like that. Here's the parking brake. Now we can shut down. Right, let's switch off the avionics. Switch off the generators. Uh, oh, the strobes didn't actually come off. That's interesting. Those are off though. That's cool. That's all. That, that, that. Right, and then we can Start turn off the batteries. Probably should have turned those lights off before I switched off the battery. Right, so there we are, arrived safely. Beyond ATC actually worked okay. That last turn was a bit sketchy. Maybe it was the combination of terrain and we were quite fast. But uh, yeah, otherwise, pretty impressed with Beyond ETC. Now what we need to do is go and find our stricken uh, caribou, hand over the parts, let them sort it out, and then later uh, this afternoon we will be flying the caribou out. Probably, I think we should probably just take it like to Durban, um, but I'll see in Neoflow what our options are for the cargo that we have on board. So I'm going to cut the video here. I'll see you again in the afternoon. All right, so here we are. It is kind of mid-afternoon, and we have our beautiful blue and red caribou all ready to go. Uh, I actually do need to check the weight, however. Okay, so let's just go and grab you can start your this. Now. Um, so as you can see, fuel, we're pretty much full. Uh, and we have a load of marketplace goods. So it's going to once again tell us that we are not getting paid. But we are. It's just that we are basically full. So we're doing 
99 percent there we go so we're basically full up with computers which we need to deliver to uh durban king sharker so it's about a 45 minute flight we'll obviously be hand flying because it's the caribou so hopefully i don't think it'll be dark by the time we get there but probably the sun will be starting to set by the time we arrive so let's not waste any more time jump aboard and the other challenge in this flight is i'm gonna have to try and remember how to fly the caribou it's been a long time i love this aircraft it's a very, very cool aircraft to fly, but it's been a long time since I have actually flown it. Can we actually get rid of this? Yes, we can. So I need to try and remember particularly how to start craft. So let's have a look around. So we're gonna need batteries, which are down here. Master start on. We're not using beyond ATC because we're just doing VFR and it doesn't do VFR yet. Okay, oil left and right. I don't know if those need to be on. Probably. Start. Oh, these don't do anything. We do have prime. We don't have the vibration switch. But we need to come up here because these magnetos need to be set to both. Pull. Prop. And mixture. Auto lean. We'll start it off there. Then, taxi and landing lights are up here. The other lights are down here somewhere. I think they're over here. So we need anti collision, warning light, wing and tail lights. No, we probably don't need those. So maybe it's just anti collision? Does it have? Yeah, it's got nav lights, it looks like. So is that wing and tail? Yes, it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, and our beacon is on. So I think we're good to go in terms of lights. Let's see if we can get her fired up. But I need to accept that as well. We have our route already programmed into the GPS. Okay, so then let's start up the left engine. Nice and easy. Okay, right engine. Also nice and easy. Okay, looks good from where I'm we sitting. can bring the props Taxi up then. The and, take off. and we can set the flaps. I'm gonna get this out of the way now because I always forget about it. Okay, so that would be auto rich. And then that must be kind of auto lean so we'll leave it there for now let's taxi out all right which way are we going oh right we need to wait for that so let's not taxi out okay why are these red because we need to set up our generators so inverter is correct left hand and right hand right we now have power that's good we'll set this onto gps there's no autopilot in this aircraft, if I remember correctly. Nope. Okay, which is cool. We're just going to hand fly it as we go. Right. Is there anything else we need to do here? Why are there so many nav GPS switches? Oh, it's for the different ones. So that does that one. And this does that one. Right. Red alt, this is our speed. Flat position indicator is there, which is very cool, actually. And this is telling us we need to head off to our right, which is exactly what the GPS is telling us, so that's good. Oh, do I not have... Let's just change this to track then. I get out of this right so it doesn't have that other view where you just flip this over and it's kind of like this we could actually use the terrain but we'll keep it on here right I think we're good to go can we see a windsor yes we can 
little bit of wind, so we need to go this way. There's no... Oh, there is a taxiway out here. Can we use that to get onto that runway? We have to go onto the other runway, but I think that's fine. We'll do that. So flaps are set. Uh, taxi lights are up here. Let's release the parking brake. And here we go. 45 minutes of hand flying the boo. All the way down to Durban, King Shaka. Very, very cool aircraft. I mean, it's a big aircraft, but it's... Um, stall capabilities are pretty sick. And I've got a whole bunch of these in our... They're great for running short... Um, short cargo trips. Because they're pretty cheap in NeoFly. And for the amount you pay, they can carry quite a lot of cargo. So I've got, I think, about five or six of these that do short cargo hops. I'm not actually, I can't actually remember how this one got stranded here in Inlandi, but anyway, we have to fix it because it's somehow, I think I must have made a mistake because um, AI pilots can't fly with just, um, with only marketplace goods they need a job and I somehow managed to fill this with marketplace computers and so the AI pilot couldn't actually take on any jobs to get anywhere which is why we had to come and rescue it it was either that or deleting like hundred thousand money's worth of computers which I didn't fancy doing do you think we have enough runway I can't actually see ah, let's just go to the end just to be safe So yeah, normally this operates between Durban King Shaka and Richards Bay, which is pretty close. The reason why we're not going to Richards Bay or Llythlui is because they don't buy computers. So we need to go to Durban. Durban King Shaka is the only airport where we can actually sell these computers and make a profit. So that's why we're going there. And it's like I said, it's about a 45 minute flight. Basically what I found in NeoFly is these aircraft are great. Um, your AI pilots have to twin rated in order to fly this because obviously it's a twin engine plane. When it comes to single engine, so your, your AI pilots that are only class A or whatever it's called, where they can only fly single engine, I mostly get them to fly the AN2s because I think the AN2 is the biggest single engine uh, piston plane you can get. So those are also nice, also for short cargo hops. They can carry quite a bit for a single engine piston. I mean, your other single engine pistons are things like your Cessna 172s and stuff like that. So there's a big difference between something like a, a little 172 and the AN2. Other kind of bigger aircraft is like the um, Beaver. Um, DH2, DHC2, it's also de Havilland, like this aircraft, but um, the AN2 carry, uh, carries quite a bit more than the Beaver as well, so that's why I've got a bunch of AN2s, which are fun to fly, it's just the cockpit's all in Russian, it's really quite difficult, I can never remember how to start it, this at least everything's in English, because it's made in Canada, right, I think we're good to go, so let's go rich on the mixture and give it some power and let's make our way out to Durban King Shaka. We're basically going behind us. We'll do we should do a left hand turn. Taken off from that runway there. Let's get the gear up. Your personal flight pilot. You can search for more jobs after you land. Stop bringing the flaps up. This aircraft is not fast. 
let's put it that way. But it is nice and smooth to hand fly. I suppose it has to be, you don't have a choice. Basically, just gonna swing around here. Yeah? And I'm gonna keep us nice and low. Obviously, we need to get over the mountains. But uh, we're just gonna go visual, no set altitude. I'll just keep it nice and low as we mission along. VFR, no clouds whatsoever, so it'll be a nice afternoon flight down to Durban. Bring the props back a bit. Are we on course? Sort of. speed are we doing? It doesn't actually say because of my view that I've got. A little bit bumpy. Let's see if we can flip this over. Ground speed 140 knots. Not fast. Well, we can speed up a little bit when we stop climbing. Just need to get over these mountains here. Everything's in the green. Maybe give a little bit more power. RPMs are good. Manifold pressure is good. It's a little bit of turbulence. But I guess that's to be expected considering the terrain we're flying over. Altitude, 4,300 feet. Ground speed, 153, so a little bit faster. Aside from the turbulence, she's trimmed out pretty nicely. It's just moving air over these mountains that are bouncing us up and down. It's crazy, look at those flap limits. 
40 degrees at 18 knots in an aircraft this big. In 105 knots is our flap, our speed limit for our first notch of flaps. Pretty much bang on. And we're expecting about 26 minutes to Durban King Shark. It does kind of suck hand flying when we're bouncing around the whole way. I'm still slowly climbing. We're now almost 5,000 feet. Just wanted to see if maybe we could get out of this unstable air. It seems like we're going to have to climb quite a lot higher than I want to for that to be the case. a little hazy out towards Durban but no clouds. Right, otherwise everything is in the green. Feels good. Just kind of trundle along. Is it a dam there? Yeah, it is. Which dam that is? Doesn't say.
probably going to be over this kind of terrain pretty much all the way. So we might have a bit of unstable air to deal with throughout the flight. I thought I could see the ocean there for a bit, but it's not. And the sun's still pretty high in the sky, so... I don't think we're actually going to be landing at sunset, like I said earlier. We're a bit... We're a bit earlier than that. Durban's weather is reporting winds at 060. Uh, winds, oh, 050. So that means runway 6 will be our best option, which means we're landing from the opposite direction, so we'll go past the airport and land from the other side. This is so two o four. Oh no, two one six is our desired track. That's the ocean out there now, right? Yeah, it could be. Pretty sure it is.
so just under 15 minutes to go now this area or somewhere here is the valley of a thousand hills I don't actually know which parts of this range count as you know where the valley of a thousand hills starts and where it ends but that's this area around here might actually be further that way but this whole area has all these valleys with the rivers that kind of carve through them I think this is the Tugela River in front of us uh, yes it is trim set so that overall we're just slowly reducing altitude as we get closer to the coast right otherwise everything's in the green we got plenty of fuel speeds looking good and we've got about 12 minutes to go been a good day of flying. We started out all the way at Malalan with the sun just barely rising and took our Kodiak up to Skuza and then IFR from Skuza into Kruger and Pomalanga and then we brought our PC-12 down to Lundi, picked up this car, a caribou we're going to take this with a full load of computers over to Durban King Sharker. And then that's going to bring us to the end of today's flights. And in the next episode, we're going to be flying a new aircraft, new route. Uh, and it's an aircraft that is even bigger than this one. So we've got something cool planned for episode 20 and that'll kind of launch us into the next chapter of our NeoFly series. And actually before I record that video I need to get that aircraft back down here needs to be actually at Durban King Sharker. It's currently up in, uh, it's actually at Kilimanjaro Airport where we've done a whole bunch of flying in previous episodes. A little bit hazier towards the ocean which is cool to see because it's pretty accurate. Ten minutes out. Yeah, I've got some cool stuff coming up on the NeoFly series. Still a pity that AI pilots can't fly helicopters. Because if you've been watching from the beginning, you remember that my first episode, the plan was to set up like a little helicopter charter business here around Durban. And then that kind of failed pretty quickly because the AI pilots can't fly the helicopters. So buying a whole fleet of helicopters makes them useless because you can only fly one at a time. So we kind of transitioned into 
all sorts of different aircraft from the AN2. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, what's a bit bigger than that? We've got a bunch of Kodiaks, we've got a bunch of PC-12s, some Islanders. Uh, what else in that kind of size? I think that's about it. Mostly the Kodiaks and the PC-12s. Then we've got these guys, the Caribous. We've got two Embraer 110s. 120s? No, they're 110s. Embraer 110s. Which do some regional passengers um, around South Africa. Actually don't have any CRJs. That's one of the, the other aircraft I wanted to get into the operation is get some CRJs because we've got two ATR 42s, the little ATRs. They also do regional passengers obviously a lot more. Um, than the Embraers. Um, by the way, all of this bright green and brown out here is sugarcane. These are all sugarcane plantations in this area. Um, and then, stepping up in size, we've got the BAE 146s. I think I've got three of those, which are some of them are cargo, some of them are passenger, also operating around South Africa. And then the biggest aircraft at the moment are the C-160s, there's three of those as well. And I think at the moment most of them are up in um, Kilimanjaro doing fairly short hops with big cargo loads in that area. Oh yes, and then I left out actually the Dash 7s. There's a couple of Dash 7s, some are up in Tanzania, uh, in Tanzania with, uh, again, doing some, I think the two that are in, or, or based at Kilimanjaro are doing regional passengers, regional airline flights. And then there's, I think one, maybe two, no, there's one that's doing cargo between Joburg and East London. I think that's the majority of the aircraft that I've got operating for the airline at the moment. Yeah, it's six minutes out. Right, so if we had to do a left-hand circuit from runway 06, that means we would turn away from the ocean. So we want to be on this side of the airport, with the airport on our left between us and the ocean. that I've set up in Neofly. We've maxed out our AI pilots. And now I just want to move on to some bigger aircraft. So the, the limitation that you have is the AI pilots are all of a certain level. So like the, the pilots that are level A or class A or whatever you want to call it, category A, can only fly, uh, can only fly single engine piston aircraft. That's why I've got, I forgot about the AN2s. I've got a whole bunch of AN2s as well, because that's the biggest aircraft, or the aircraft with the most capacity that those AI pilots can fly. And then they step all the way up through the different categories. Um, so some of them, the Caribous are the biggest they can fly because it's twin engine piston. You then can do single engine turbine, which is mostly the PC-12s. And then twin turbine is the um, ATRs. And then the multi-engine guys are doing the uh, BAE 146s, because they got four engines. The Dash 7 also got four engines. 
so yeah we can't it's not like we can build a fleet of all 737s or something because some of the pilots just can't fly those but what I do want to do is get some of the pilots that are qualified to fly bigger aircraft that are still flying Kodiaks and things like that is to start using the money to upgrade them so they're on bigger aircraft and then obviously earning more money as well. Okay, four minutes out, let's switch over to the map just so we can see. Should be able to see the airport shortly. And I think I can see the terminal buildings and there's the runway lights flashing here. So we'll go just this side of the terminal. Bring it round, land on runway six, and we'll taxi to the cargo apron that we use here at King Shaka. Oh, quite hazy in this area, especially out over the ocean. to our left here. And we're still slowly bleeding off altitude. up to 400 knots and our limit is like 210. for today finishing off with a nice chill flight in the boo I'll probably get one of the AI pilots to fly the PC-12 back to Kruger well, I might have to fly it here to Durban or Peter Maritzburg first to find jobs that it can actually take up to Kruger but yeah next episode we won't be in the PC-12 we're in something else, something big, which will operate out of here at King Shaka. All right, we need to start prepping for our landing. Let's get the props full. slowing down right we'll get the gear down what are we now? 130, so 105 is our limit for our first stage of flaps. Okay. 
which is about there. So let's go flaps 15. A little bit high, but it's fine because I need a touchdown. We can touch down a bit further because this aircraft has amazing stall performance and I don't want to have to taxi for ages. So we're taking the taxiway that's kind of halfway down the runway. Okay, flaps are set for landing. And we're basically just going to coast it in now. speed where it needs to be. I'm going to go down the runway here because there's no point touching down this far. I'm going to have to taxi for ages. doing like 60 knots. It's crazy, right? Here's the taxiway. Flaps up, get the strobes. No, we don't actually have strobes, we get the landing lights off. Big flaps on this aircraft. Right, let's dial our mixture down to lean. And we'll taxi into the cargo area, which is just across here. actually switch off yesterday. There we are, shut down, safely arrived. Uh, we can switch these off, and that one flaps that, this, we can put this back in. These You're guys to start can off. And then lights. That's done, that's done, that's done. All of this can then come off. Cool. 
cool. And there we are, safely arrived at King Sharker in the Caribou. So what I can do now is quickly just sell those computers. And that gives us 250k. Nice. Right, and that is going to bring us to the end of episode 19. So a nice um, eventful day of flying. Uh, maybe not, maybe eventful isn't isn't the best word for it, but uh, we had a good full day. We've flown a bunch of different aircraft and we've ended up all the way down here at the coast in Durban when we started off at Malalan up in the high felt. Low felt, in the low felt. Anyway, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode of the Neo Flyer series. As I said before, we will be doing something new and exciting in episode 20. But as always, if you made it all the way to this part of the video, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow along with the series, you know what to do down below, and I'll see you in the next one.